Hi everyone, this is Lisa Marie from Artistry by Lisa Marie. Welcome to the studio. Remember the link to download this coloring page, the link of all the links to all the supplies I use, and the names of all the colors are in the video description. Today, I am playing with color a little bit. Let me explain. So I drew this coloring page a few days ago. Uh, super excited. I love the image. I loved drawing the bottle. Uh, but then I decided to play with color while I'm coloring it in. And what I mean by that is I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't decide what color to make the spots on the giraffe. So I thought this might be a fun opportunity to play a little bit with color. So what I'm doing is the colors of the spots I'm actually separating out a little bit. So I'm blending different colors together for different sections of the spot. So here you can see a nice warm uh, kind of a brown and orangish color that I'm doing for this section of the spots. And then I'm going to be transitioning the spots in the next section to a slightly different color. And my goal was to make this transition kind of subtle uh, and very warm still. So what I'm going to do is the colors that I'm using here in this first section, I'm going to choose one color to incorporate or use in the next section of spots. And that'll be almost a visual bridge connecting the next section. And then the section after that, I'll choose a color to bridge again those sections. So the transition, there'll be obviously a difference in the colors that I'm using, but the transition will still be visually very gentle. So for example, the color in that first section that I used was pale vermilion that I'm also going to be using in this next section of spots. Um, still going though with my general rule of dark, medium, and light. Uh, you can see I choose a dark, medium, and light hue for each section. And for example, the pale vermilion is a little bit of a lighter color in that first section. And now I'm using it as a bit of a lighter color in the next section. And now this next section, see it's now starting with a bluer, uh, dark hue, blue, uh, darker color. It's actually a black grape is that dark color. I'll write all the colors down for you. But um, black grape and the poppy red that I used in the section before that, I'm also going to be using in this next section. So that's how, that's kind of my idea for doing a nice transition of colors. And I'm using the same colors in the tip of the mom giraffe's face and I'm putting them in the baby giraffe's face. So that's how I'm going to be connecting them visually as well. And then I'm just going to mirror uh, the color transition, but in reverse on the baby. So right now I'm doing the black grape, poppy red, lavender um, on the tips of their faces for the spots. Uh, but then I'm going to be going in reverse in the baby's body. Uh, so this is actually a good example of when you need to write down the colors you're using. Because <laughs> I was going back through the baby's body and at one point, you know, I'm looking at those spots and I was like, what color did I use again? Uh, so just a friendly reminder to be better than me and actually write down the colors that you're using if you're going to try and do something a little bit fancier in your um, color scheme or your color palette. But I like the way this worked out. So I use a dark, medium, and light in all of the spots. Uh, it's basically just a different color palette uh, for each section of the spots. It was actually kind of fun, and it was a nice little experiment in, you know, playing with color I'm not going to say really it was a rainbow color effect because I, you know, it's not the broad spectrum of the rainbow. I'm not using all of the colors. It's just a nice little subtle transition of a color scheme with a limited palette. Uh, very warm still. Uh, even with that, you know, really dark sort of purplish in the tip there, you know, the other, that poppy red keeps it, keeps it very warm, which was kind of fun. Very nice. And there you can see I used dark, medium, and light. And I'm still, because it's kind of, it's a grayscale drawing, I'm still keeping with where the shadows are in the grayscale drawing itself. So the shadow by the back of that 
you know, baby's neck, the bit of the shadow with the, you know, highlighting in the front of the neck. I'm still maintaining that grayscale look. I'm letting the original shading of the drawing still be my guide, so I know where to put the dark, medium, and light tones. And now I'm back to that original color palette that I started off with in the mom's uh, spots. Visually, it's also kind of a nice, you know, connection, you know, between the mom and the baby. Uh, it's a very gentle image. I was going for a very, you know, maternal sort of look. So color-wise, it also kind of works too. The whole idea is this, uh, this drawing is part of a series I'm working on right now. Um, kind of, you know, the whole idea of a love letter or letter in a bottle or, you know, capturing a beautiful moment in a bottle. Um, it's sort of a love letter, love note to all the moms, uh, out there, you know, just capturing that beautiful moment between a mother and a baby in a bottle. I know it's very poetic. <laughs> I thought it would be a really fun series to work on. And it's super fun to color as well. So I'm okay with that. So there I'm just finishing up putting uh, the lighter tone on the spots of the baby giraffe. And you can see me moving around my pencils off to the side. That means I'm transitioning to the next part of whatever I'm going to be focusing on, which is now the body of the giraffes. And what's interesting is, you know, the bodies of giraffes, obviously this isn't a super realistic drawing, but well, I've already done, but the bodies of giraffes um, behind the spots, they're generally considered white or off-white. And that was the other part that I really wanted to play with uh, while coloring this page was using the white of my paper as a tool or really a main character. So I'm using, I'm going to be using lighter colors and let the white of the paper show through a little bit more. So it's overall um, going to be kind of a minimalist approach uh, where I'm using lighter hues, you know, very gentle blending and just letting the white of the paper um, show through but still create a you know nice or try to create you know a nice grayscale you know three-dimensional looking image very similar to um, if you've ever seen watercolor artists you know they'll do those nice beautiful washes of color on their paper but they still let the white of the paper uh, show through uh, in a painting. So the white of the paper is the white for their art. I uh, thought I would try something similar here with colored pencils. These are Prismacolor colored pencils, uh, blend pretty well, and they're also fairly affordable and fairly well known, which is why I often use them when I do my coloring videos. Just they're easy for pretty much everyone to find and have access to. So again, you can see I choose a dark, medium, and light. My colors are lighter hues, but still there's a darker color, medium, and then lighter colors. And wherever there's the darker colors, I'm blocking out the darkest shadows. Then I take my medium tone colors and I build up on that. I actually took dark brown and a blue and I put blended them together on the paper in the shadows to create the shadow that I wanted. And now I'm using my medium tones um, which are, you know, they're beige and creams that I'm going to be using. So nothing very dark. I, I Again, they're lighter colors, lighter hues. Uh, but I'm slowly building up from the shadows. And I'm using these medium tones as a bridge to connect the shadowy spots, uh, which really aren't that dark anyway, but the darker shadowy spots to the white of the paper, which is my highlight, my lightest spots of the giraffe's body. It's almost visually molding or building up the form of the giraffe's body with color. 
And I think the white of the paper does a pretty good job um, in this minimalist approach of being the highlight. In a minute, you're going to see me use my super favorite cream color. Uh, it's called cream and I use it all the time. I'll write it down. Remember in the video description, everything will be written down, but uh, that color is quite frequently my go-to when I need to blend or soften uh, or highlight, you know, a nice warm palette. There it is. There's the cream. Uh, so what I'll do is instead of using um, a colorless blender, which a lot of people use, I like to use the lightest color um, in the color palette that I've chosen and go over um, all of those layers of colors that I've already put down in the paper and blend the layers together with that lighter color. It creates a very nice, soft, warm look and it stays in the color palette. And we can see right there, it just, I'm going over the darker sections with it and the lighter sections with it. So it kind of unifies the whole image and it blends all those colors together right on the page. But you can definitely still see the white of the paper. I, I tried a very soft, gentle hand here uh, while doing all of this. Look at that cute little baby giraffe. How adorable with that. I really liked drawing those eyes. Those eyes are not anatomically correct. Um, <laughs> I, I was looking at a lot of giraffe photos and images and studying their, you know, their anatomy uh, to draw this and I decided their eyes needed to be bigger. Uh, <laughs> so I kind of went for a puppy dog eye look, I guess you could call it. Uh, those eyes are not anatomically correct, but they're cute and they were fun to draw. Uh, so here you can see again, I'm using that cream. Uh, so I, again, visually, the colors really unify or connect the baby and the mom um, by mirroring the color palette of the spots and using the same colors in the white of the body of the mom and the white of the body of the baby. Um, it really connects them together. Same colors and that little bit of hair on the top. Just pushing my shadows a little bit more with that dark brown, uh, very warm. I put that blue in there also, remember, so right now what that brown is doing is it's blending with all those colors underneath it, including that blue, to help make it a little bit richer. And I'm just going to the darkest areas just to push my shadows. And uh, then I go with my slightly lighter colors. I'm blending, 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 constantly blending to create smooth transitions in the shading. But just pushing my shadows a little bit darker. To create a nice sense of volume. Speaking of messages in a bottle, so when I started doing this series, oh my gosh, I went down a rabbit hole Googling and researching the whole message in a bottle, like the history of it. I don't know if anyone's ever looked into that before. There's the eye. I just use a dark, a medium, and a light in that eye. Uh, very minimal. Uh, a lot of the shading has already been done. So just a little bit of highlights is all that's necessary. Anyway, so in 310 BC, a Greek philosopher used bottled messages to determine if the Mediterranean was formed by the Atlantic Ocean. Like he, he followed waterways with messages in bottles. How cool is that? Um, also, a lot of letters were sent by sailors or people at sea worried about drowning. Um, they were like farewell messages and notes to loved ones that they put in bottles. Oh, there's my little paint marker. I'll use that again later in the bottle uh, when I'm coloring it in the very end. But just a quick touch of white highlight. Um, and now I'm moving on to the cork, which again, dark, medium, and light, minimal approach with color. I want the white of the paper to kind of shine through. So uh, there's a dark, medium, and light uh, brown tones that I'm using. But again, I'm not pressing down hard. I'm just gently layering those colors on the cork. 
uh, and letting the white of the paper, you know, have its moment. <clears throat> also, instead of applying the color in strokes, I'm applying it in little itty bitty circles, which makes the color look a little bit rougher, uh, which helps reinforce or show that cork texture. So the next thing I found out was in 1956, a Swedish sailor sent a message in a bottle and he wrote to someone beautiful and far away. It reached a 17 year old Sicilian girl and that started their correspondence and they ended up getting married in 1958. How cool is that? There is such a huge history of messages and love notes and correspondence in bottles. It is absolutely amazing. And I spent a lot of time just reading all the stories about messages and bottles. And if you ever need to um, waste time, <laughs> just Google messages and bottles and the history of it. And you have hours of reading ahead of you. Okay, so next, uh, I'm moving on to the bottle. And Glass is super fun to draw and I know there's different ways of coloring it. It all really depends on the approach you're looking for or if you're trying to be realistic, you know, the type of glass, the color of the glass and the color of the stuff around the glass. There are just so many variables when it comes to coloring glass. Uh, I say just go for it, have fun and play. But what I started with for this particular bottle is I'm using warm browns in certain sections. So near the giraffes, near the cork bottle, wherever there are already warm browns, warm colors, uh, I'm gently applying warm browns, warm colors in the glass as well. Uh, and that's to give it kind of a sense of being a little bit reflective of the colors around it. I'm not <clears throat> I'm not going to do a background for this particular image. Um, I just wanted to let the white of the paper kind of show again. So what I'm using is just the brown images that are of the cork and in the giraffes. If I had a background color, uh, I'd also have to use that. I'd have to incorporate that into the glass for the certain, the specific effect that I'm using here. But it's just the cork and the giraffe, so just the browns near them. Uh, again, very light, very delicate application. Delicate meaning I'm not pressing hard with my pencil uh, and I'm using very light hues of color and gently blending them and pulling them out to the white of the paper. Oh, there's my paintbrush. Remember, do not just sweep your hand over your page or blow on your page. If you have little bits of color or little grains of color or whatever, use a fine, very gentle, uh, paintbrush, bristled paintbrush, and gently wipe things away. I can't tell you how many times I've ruined my art by blowing on it, which means, you know, you can accidentally spit on it, uh, or sweeping my hand, and then I ruin the colors. It's just, it's so much better to use a paintbrush. Um, and I say that, and I guarantee you, you will see me at one point use my hand and sweep away color because I'm impatient. Okay, so next I have my browns. Now, to get that cooler glass uh, feel or look, I use a dark, medium, and light blue. So I have my sections of brown, you know, gently mapped out, and now I'm using my blues. Again, they're very light colors, very light blues. Um, and I'm mapping out sections of the blue, and they're going to be juxtaposed. They're going to be right next to each other on the bottle or in the bottle. And you can see here, uh, my hand is further back from the pencil. And the reason why is I want to be very, very gentle when I use this medium blue. Uh, I don't want to press hard. I want it to be a very just nice, smooth wash of color. So I keep my hand further away from the tip of the pencil. The closer your hand is to the tip of the pencil, um, the, the harder you press down and it's not something that you can easily change. It's kind of a subconscious thing. Uh, so if you have your hand further away from the tip of the pencil, it's a lot easier to apply the color gently. <clears throat> and that's something that was kind of important for me here because, you know, I don't want to press down too hard while doing this 
wash of colored pencil. And you can see how by keeping it light, it's easier to put the blue next to the brown without blending those colors together. And the white of the paper is the bridge between those two colors. And that's a super light blue that I have there. Um, I'll write it down for you, but I think it's called powder blue. That's powder blue. Uh, so that's my blending color. Remember I said I'll use the color, uh, lightest color in the color palette as my overall blender. And so that's going over all of the darker shades to blend the colors together. But it is, I see my hand way back there. It is still a super light wash of color. Um, speaking of research, by the way, I also looked up some stuff about giraffe moms because uh, I was kind of curious just, you know, what kind of moms are they out in nature? First of all, giraffe moms are pregnant for 15 months, which right away they get like a big reward for that because, oh my gosh, uh, I have two children and I can't imagine being pregnant that long. Um, the females in the group help take care of the babies when the mom has to go get food, but... The mom giraffes are always on guard protecting the baby, so much so that they only get on average 30 minutes of sleep a day when they're in mom mode. And that is totally understandable to me. Uh, <laughs> so props to all those giraffe moms out there. All right, next, taking the white pencil. Uh, I don't usually use the white pencil as a blender. Uh, like I said, I like to use the lightest color in the color palette. However, there's always an exception to a rule. And for my little coloring rule here is, you know, it's a glass bottle and I'm using the white of the paper as the highlight. So white is part of the color palette. So I can use the white pencil to blend and it helps soften all those layers of color, soften the overall image of the glass. I had to resharpen my pencil there. Um, blending, blending, but very, very gentle. And this was overall, you know, a really fun experiment in using the white of the paper, you know, trying some different blending of color, different colors in the giraffe spots. Uh, this was really fun. A very gentle, delicate image, which was kind of what I was going for, so that's good. Uh, remember, you can download this coloring page in the video description. So you can actually color along with me if you want, or color a completely different way. And uh, I'd love to see how you color in this glass bottle drawing with the drafts. This is just one of many takes, many ways to color in this image. Uh, and then finally, uh, I use my paint marker just for some nice brighter white highlights. You don't have to do this. I just wanted some kind of crisp white highlights to really get that shiny look going on. Uh, but that was it, basically. Just some final touches of white, and I am done. So thank you for visiting the studio. Remember to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video. And stay creative. Bye!